Good morning, children. I hope you all are good. Your weekend was excellent. And welcome yet another time to the English class. Right? And as I told you that uh, today we are going to start with the new poem. Right? Uh, a new chapter, which is a poem, basically. And, it says, and the title suggests is the, the snail. It is again a Ruskin bond poem. Now you know, you, you are familiar with Ruskin Bond, how, what type of uh, writing he has and how he writes, you know, and uh, basically, moreover, uh, how he connects all the small and ordinary things and the creatures in a, in a very, very eminent way, in a very, in a very proficient way. And then moreover, he connects with the human bonds also, you know, he does not write poem only to just uh, inspire people, but he also writes to connect uh, with the human bonds, right? He always uh, dwells in the human bonds and he always, uh, always wants to, to deliver or, um, you know, to to tell people about how human bonds work, you know, and how, what, how, what and how a man or a person could be inspired by mere a smallest creatures on the earth, which we even might not take care of them when we look around, right? And uh, as we have seen earlier also uh, in the lesson Owls in the Family that Ruskin Bond creates a very nice drama, very nice imagery, you know, uh, Ruskin Bond creates um, a very, very subtle and, you know, uh, uh, unusual things into such a wonderful and magnificent piece of artwork that we are amazed to, to read and remember and recall. You know, similarly, the snail, as we all know, the snail, you all must be knowing what is the snail. It is the smallest creature, okay, uh, which is very slow. It moves very slow. It does not have agility. And how this creature can inspire, I mean, we just cannot even think in our wildest of dreams that a snail could, could, could inspire people. I mean, Ruskin Bond could create that snail into such a, such, a, such, such a big inspiration that we all are moved with this inspiration, right? So let's have a look to the poem that is Snail by Ruskin Bond. And again, as a highlight of the, of the poem, what we should look forward in this poem are uh, two things. Basically, first is see how we can learn from even the humblest creature in the nature. You know, humblest, why the word humblest? Because humble, humble, the person or the thing which is humble, they, they are never, never aggressive, they will never show off. Uh, they do not show the pompous way of life and everything, right? At the same time, practice simile. Okay, direct and indirect objects. Now practice similes. Similes, what are similes? Basically, these, these are the figures of speech, right? Um, as we have done, we have come across many figures of speech last year also. And I told you that time also that there is a simile, metaphor, personification. And now children, it is really a, a really high time all of you for all of you to remember all these things, right? So simile, personification, metaphor. These are the basic three um, uh, figures of speech uh, uh, that you should remember. It is must for all of you to remember. So I will repeat. Uh, I will give the uh, reinforcement for all these uh, these three writings, uh, figures of speech. Uh, so similes, when we talk about simile, first of all, the words like, uh, the words like and as is used, right? So when we, when, when we use like and as the words, it becomes a simile, which means two different objects, two entirely different objects, maybe one object or a person, are compared with one common quality. Remember, with one common quality, right? And the things should be entirely opposite or entirely different to each other. For example, if I say, um, uh, uh, she was, she was, Shivaji was a great warrior, everybody knows that. Uh, Shivaji was, uh, was like a lion in the battlefield. Or if I say, uh, a camel, uh, is a ship of a, is like a ship of a desert. So when I'm using like, first of all, I'm using the word like or as. Then I'm comparing two different things. First is uh, the warrior, that is Shivaji, and another is an animal, which is a lion. When I compare, and what I compare in these two, 
you know, ferocious, brave, courageous, you know, the leader I'm comparing. I'm comparing this quality from the tiger to the warrior. When I talk about a camel and the ship, why ship? Because ship sails in the water. You know, no other thing can, can, uh, can take the place of ship in the water. If it is a ship, it if it is a water, if it is a sea, it has to be a ship. No aeroplane, no truck, no car, nothing. So that is why. That is why I, I, we can say that ship, um, as ship is so very important for sailing to take a voyage. Similarly, if it is a desert, we cannot think of any other animal but the camel. Right, so it is a it is a comparison. It is a comparison of one quality from of two different objects. That is a simile, right? Metaphor is the same thing. When it is a simile only, but we, we avoid using words like uh, the words like and as. We directly say. If I take the, uh, the, uh, the, the the examples one more time, I will say if it is a metaphor I need to prepare, make. I will say that. Uh, uh, Shivaji is a is a lion in the battlefield. Means I am taking Shivaji as a lion. I'm not comparing. I'm saying. I'm stating that Shivaji is a lion in a in a battlefield. Second example, converting simile to metaphor without using like and as. How will I convert it? Uh, for example, if I say um, camel is the ship of desert. I have not used like and as. I have I have stated I have completely declared it. So when we say the same thing without using like and as, it becomes metaphor. These two should be remembered by you thoroughly. Okay, and personification. I will let you later on. Let's see what the poem says now. Okay. Do you do you look for an inspiration? Do we look for an inspiration? At times we are dull, you know, we are low, we, uh, we you know, with the difficulties and, and due to the problems we face, we try to give up at times. And that is why we need some inspiration. We need maybe people, situation, uh, maybe a story can, can inspire us, a small a song can inspire us, maybe some quotes can in, inspire us. Like nowadays on WhatsApp, it is very if it is very, uh, 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 you know, uh, nicely observed or it is very common to send uh, good morning quotes, some inspirational quotes, you know, our legendary heroes, our freedom fighters, they inspire us, you know, so that we can come, we can, we, we should not, so that we, we should not give up the hope and so that we should come over uh, or, or we should overcome the situations and the problems which we face in the day-to-day -day life. Right? That is why we look for the inspiration. And yes, we look for inspiration here and there. It could be uh, an inanimate object. It could be a, a legend. It could be a myth. It could be a story. It could be, could be whatever, you know. Uh, even sitting with your parents, maybe with your friends could inspire you. So we need inspiration and we look for inspiration. And that is true. At times, the smallest and the most insignificant creatures can inspire and motivate us. And that is also true. See. When we learn, when we study, when we focus on, 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 on our uh, syllabus, we study, you know. But when we, when we have to gain knowledge, we look around. Because knowledge is everywhere. You can learn from anything. Like, you know, uh, people say we can learn from an ant, we can learn from even a spider. Similarly, we can even learn from, from the snail, which is the smallest and insignificant creature, which we, ever, which, which we might not look at even. You know, at times, but how the snail can motivate us. In this poem, a slow moving snail teaches the poet something important about life. Read the poem to find out how. You know, the snail, the, the snail which moves so very slowly, we find no attraction, we find no, we think that there is no inspiration in it. But then Ruskin Bond has that quality. Remember I told you Ruskin Bond can create a smallest or even insignificant things in the creatures around and, uh, you know, and use them and, you know, uh, write about them and they can, they, he can turn things into magnificent piece of art. Similarly, look at this poem now. Let's, let's start now, the poem. Before we start the poem, few things you must remember. 
when we learn a poem, uh, we have some poetic device, right? Figures of speech are one of them. Then rhyming words are the second. Then we have to look for the rhyme scheme. This also we have done last year, how to find out the rhyme scheme, right? So don't worry about it. There is nothing new. It is just the same thing, but little packaging and the terms are different. Because now you are in class six, you should know all these terminologies. Clear? Yeah? So, so poetic devices. What are those poetic devices? Figures of speech, rhyme scheme, rhyming words. Clear? Yeah? Now let's begin. Leaving the safety of a, a rocky ledge. Leaving the safety. Safety means secured. You know, uh, comfortable place or comfortable campus and safe place to live on. Leaving the safety of the rocky ledge. Ledge, ledge here means uh, a narrow horizontal something, uh, you know, projection which comes out of the wall. Okay, out of the wall or, or any cliff or any, any circle. So something which comes out as a projection. That is called as a ledge. The snail. Now the snail wants to do something. And what he wants to do? The snail sets out on his long journey across the busy path. Just imagine a snail, which is very small, who crawls uh, very, very slowly. The snail is not at all agile. The snail is not at all giant, big. Nobody could, I mean, we could even hardly see snail, you know, moving around, right? So that smallest of creature, which is insignificant, which we even look at it, we don't even look at that, that creature. That creature has decided to set a journey and he has decided a goal in his life and that is why he is ready to take on any danger, any challenge, any trouble, right? So the first stanza of the poem, when it opens, it, 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 gives, it, the, it gives us the impact that if the smallest of the creature, which is so very insignificant, can set some goal to achieve in, his, in, in, in its life, why can't we? We have brain, we have power, we have thought process, we have resources, we have sources. So why can't we set some goal and look forward to it? And we, why can't we start uh, giving a hundred percent to achieve that goal? So what the snail has, has decided, the snail sets out, sets out his long journey across the busy path now busy path now when the word the poet uses this word busy path it means everything we can imagine on the path it could be vehicles it could be people it could be other uh, creatures other animals roaming coming going to and fro so it's a busy path it is not a free path or it is not a empty path where a snail can very nicely uh, cross it you know that means uh, the journey which uh, the snail is going to take, it has got all the possible dangers, hostile environments, hostile situations, and still this, uh, this snail wants to fight it back and reach to its goal. Right? So the second paragraph. The grass is greener on the other side for the tender leaf or juicy stain. He will brave the hazards of the road. Now, why he has decided to to uh, to set uh, to set out for a journey? Because he wants to have a better life. Okay, and for snail, what is a better life? Greenery, grass. Okay, juicy stems, tender, uh, soft leaves, uh, which he can eat and can grow double, you know, can thrive uh, better, be stronger and stout. So that is his goal, to have a better life. Because naturally when he will grow up, he will, be, he will grow, he will have strength, his life would be good and nice. So what is the purpose of his journey? His, the purpose of his journey is to go, go across the path where he can find juicy stains and green grass and, you know, tender leaves. Uh, and that is why he has set out to, and he is ready to brave, he is ready to endeavor, he is ready to take on all the hazards. Now, what are the hazards? Hazards, hazards are, could be termed as 
a danger or a risk here when i talk about about a snail the danger is of his own life he is risking his own life okay he is risking his life for uh, you know, for this bowl he is risking his life to have a comfortable and a, a, a better life right now we are to the on on the third stanza not made to dodge what is dodge dodge means to avoid okay he is not ready to dodge any danger he, he has decided that all the danger dangers and the troubles and situations and the problems which are coming to our uh, to my life i will i will overcome i will fight so that i can have a better life i can achieve my goal you know i can live my life in a better way you know that is why he is ready to take all the dangers and he is not ready to dodge anything he is ready to take on everything which comes into his um way or into his uh, his his uh, into in, into the path of, of his goal not me to dodge or weave or run he must wait each threatening threatening step he must await you know here he says that okay fine i am i'm there i'm i'm here only i'm not going anywhere if i am and i'm ready to take any threatening thing, uh, step which is coming in my way what is the threatening step which means having a hostile or frightening situations hostile i told you hostile is a word which means which means um, uh, the the situations are enemy to us the situations are not friendly to us right and all those situations you can you can term as it could be you know the path is busy so there are vehicles there are people there are other creatures and he he has already risked his life because nobody could hardly even see where is the snail right so these all the threatening steps which he is ready to face and enter right chancing his luck he will wait for his 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 luck he will wait he will chance his luck okay but still he will fight back he will not sit on the ledge and he will not wait for some good things happening or his fortune to work because naturally as as the proverb says god helps those who help help themselves so here is the snail who is trying to help himself and that is why he is ready to take the chances he is ready to chance his luck but let's see what happens but at least i should start a journey this is what this is what the snail is thinking keeping keeping his tentacles crossed keeping his tentacles crossed though all unaware of the dangers of being being squashed you know tentacles i will show you yes tentacles a long limb limb used for holding and moving you know he he will put his tentacles tentacles crossed here it could be a sign of a good omen right that he wants to he wants to keep all those good omen and uh, good thoughts positive thoughts with himself right and uh, keeping the tentacles crossed though all unaware of the dangers of being squashed here squashed means here the meaning of squashed means crushed actually now you know it's a busy path in any which way he may be crushed he may be put down uh, you know he 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 may be uh, given a situation where he decides to give up but he is keeping everything he is keeping his fingers like we keep our fingers crossed that is why and that is a good omen we think it's a good omen so that is why he 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 thinks that when he if he if he keeps if he, if he will keep his tentacles crossed it will be sort of a good omen that means he is keeping his positivity he is keeping his never said i attitude completely there completely uh, we can say uh, he is not ready to give up and that is why he is actually thinking of positive things and he is ready to uh think take on all the good domain and all the positivity from his from its environment 
he does not pause or flinch what is the meaning of flinch jerk back he will not stop definitely until and unless his goal is not served until and unless his purpose is not met he will not stop he will keep his journey on he will keep on facing the dangers he will keep on taking the chances he will keep on risking his life but he will not stop until his goal is met until his goal is achieved a cartwheel misses by an inch what is a cartwheel you know children cartwheel it's a body movement uh, especially we talk this this term uh, while it is a dance so what is a what is a cartwheel it is a sideways movement of your hands and arms you when you swing on your hands and arms sideways it's a cartwheel so for him this is complete cartwheel situation you know everything will change ultimately if if he if he goes if he reaches to his destiny if he if he if he cross that path it will be all the cartwheel but if something something problematic happens and he will miss that change by an inch can you understand this he will miss that change by an inch it is that important for for the snail you know to go to his destination to reach his destination and just imagine you know it happens it happens with us also you know we fight we fight we, we prepare ourselves and we fight we, we uh, you know we take all uh, the pains and hazards and we take uh, we we take on everything and you, as kids also you must have faced it you know maybe it's a house competition or it's a sports competition you know we reach the final with, with all the struggles uh, you know and then finally at times we lose it we lose it by an inch you know that card wheel maybe 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 uh, maybe lost by an inch so the similar thing is faced by the snail right if something happens if he is squashed if he if 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 he, if he faces any danger if he is dead in the journey then whatever he has planned for his life it is all gone the card wheel is is missed by an inch right but then what happens let's see but but the slithers on slithers on intent on dinner okay what is what is slither creeps intent on dinner but now he is ready he 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 has all focus and he has understood that he it's like a cartwheel and it is just a few yards away from whatever he wants in his life and that is why he has set that now i will have my dinner at that particular place only you know i will have that dinner whatever i have decided it's enough i need to make it fast and i, I need to reach that place where it, where i could where i could have a nice dinner tonight that means now he understands that his final journey has started has begun to reach those few inches you know to complete those few inches so that he can reach to his destiny he can reach to his destination he can find what he has planned for he he can get what he has decided for right and what he has decided if we talk about the snail he has decided a green he has he has decided to reach that place where it has green greenery everywhere where he can have tender leaf or the juicy steams right to as the last four lines he is there at last you know after gathering all the courage he had left now after completing that hard and difficult and hazardous um, and you know hostile journey all through that path because see children snail is a very small creature for him for for that that snail that path that across the road for us it may be a matter of few seconds but imagine for that snail which 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 moves so slowly for that snail it could be a journey of a day or two slowly slowly with that busy path with all the dangers and hazards and the hostile situations which he had he had come across and now after gathering all the courage all the might 
whatever he had left to complete th those last few inches, he had finally crossed it, you know, with positive approach and he is finally there. Where? Where he can find all the juicy stem and tender leaf and greenery everywhere so that he can have a better life. He could thrive, he could grow stronger, he could build himself very nicely. Okay, and he could have a nice life there. Okay, so the last four para four lines are positive, very towards the positive note, towards the positive ending. He is there at last. He is there at last. His prize. And what is the prize he is getting now? Rich leaf mool where the grass grows tall. After, after all the hazards, after all the hardships, he has finally got his due. He has finally got his what he deserves to get. And what is that? A rich mold where the grass grows taller, where he can have a very comfortable, easy, uh, safe life, which we can we can say, right? So this is the result. This is the prize he has got after all the uh, hazards he has taken on his journey, right? So similarly, poet wants to inspire us also that maybe the, uh, in the in the journey. To, our, to achieve our goals. We may face any hardships. We may face difficult times, but we should keep on working. We should keep on going on. We should not think of the hostile environment, but we should always think of that positive thing, of that good result, of that you know fruitful result which we bore after we reach to the destination after we go to our destination, after we reach that goal, you know, all the applause, all the appreciation which we will get if we achieve our goal, we should always think about all those positive things and we should keep on doing our work the way we do, right? And the last two lines, the poet, right? The poet is utterly, you know, he is so very respectful, you know, and grateful to the snail that the smallest and insignificant creature of the on the earth that could uh, that could inspire him, and that is why this poet Ruskin Bond salutes the snail. You know, he says, "I salute you, snail, because I I could have never thought in my wildest of dreams that you could uh, inspire me." Right, you could inspire me, but finally you have inspired me to the core, to the core of my heart. You know, and now I will be a changed man. I will take my life. I will look at look at look at my life in a very positive and a good manner, as you have done it. Right. So I salute you, snail. Somehow you have made me feel quite a small. Now, why poet says that that smallest of creature has made the poet feel so small? Because he himself cannot inspire, you know, having such a thoughtful mind, uh, you know, such a comfortable life around, people around to take care, loving people to take, you know, people to love, uh, love him and still he is unable to inspire himself, even to others. But this small creature, uh, you know, this creature had nothing with, with, with him. He had no support, even of the size even with the agility, he had no support and still he could endeavor all the dangers, whatever had come into uh, had come into his path and achieved his goal. And that is why he said, I, I said, that is why the poet is saying that looking at you, Snail, I, I feel so small because I am a big creature. I have mind, I have thoughts, I have ideas, you know, but I could not inspire. Okay, I have to look for inspiration in you. So you have become much bigger because without saying anything, without doing any good to me, without anything, doing any good directly to me, you have inspired me, right? So that is why the poet says that you have made, you have made, made me feel quite small, right? I hope you have understood this poem. Okay, now quickly, can we just uh, look at is how much time is left okay so the rest of the things which i take tomorrow a discussion of the rhyming scheme and the simile okay uh, other figures of speech rhyming words okay so that we shall take tomorrow i uh, request all of you to please 
read the poem one more time and revise it. Okay? So that's, that is all for children for today. And tomorrow we shall uh, come back and we will have the further uh, things which we should discuss about the poem that we will take on in the next class. Clear to all of you? By that time, read the poem and keep revising. Bye-bye and have a great day ahead.